All right, so NAWCQ is happening next weekend, Euros, two weeks from now. There's a lot going on. Info is dropping. Fiend Smith is about to make our lives living hell, pretty much. So let's talk about the best decks in the meta post Infinite Forbidden. Before we jump into it, I just want to let you know that I'll be releasing a lot of new content with brand new cosplays really soon on my OnlyFans. So if you're interested in that, my link is down below. Also, my SP giveaway is going to be ending tomorrow. So today is your last chance to enter. All you got to do is make sure you like the video and also sub and comment something on any of my videos for a chance to be entered. So there's that. And the last announcement is Sleep Shift is dropping some beautiful products today. I will have all the pictures for you on the screen. There's this amazing deck box if you're a dragon or a tempai dragon enthusiast and uh, they're also releasing some well restocking some of fan favorite products so if you have your eye on anything make sure to use code shadow for five percent off so you save some money while you're purchasing some really cool accessories so with that let's jump straight into it i'm super excited about today's tier list because a lot of decks are receiving support and we're also introducing new archetypes with infinite forbidden so there's a lot to talk about so the first deck we're going to be talking about is branded Despia. In my opinion, this deck is going to be ranked a little lower than before. And this is like the first time in quite a while, but I think it's gonna jump to like top of tier two or yeah, probably top of tier two, maybe bottom of tier 1.5. Look, this entire tier list is just my predictions, depending on what I feel like is going to happen in the format, which decks are going to see play, which cards are going to see play to counter the top decks and... Uh, yeah, it's just my thoughts because obviously we haven't had any results yet. So take everything with a grain of salt because I'm just predicting. But I feel like I have, um, you know, enough, I guess, knowledge to determine that this is not going to do as well. It's just that Fiendsmith is going to dominate the meta way too much. And this Bia was fine at cracking boards and doing stuff. But I think it's going to be almost impossible to do that in a format so heavily just oppressed by Fiendsmith. And paired out together with the inherent problems that Dispia has, in my opinion, it's not gonna do as well. So, you know, you just gotta think about like just overall events in general. Dispia didn't have the highest representation in Top Cut. There were a couple players that did really well. And Gimmick Puppet, like the lock is still an issue, in my opinion. It should be addressed. I just feel like Dispia has you know, a deck in general is not going to do as well. Um, things are going to change. Let's just put it that way. And we'll talk about some of these changes a little later when we address some other decks. So yes, the SPL. <laughs> then let's talk about Dragon Link. Look, I just, I, I gotta put it in this tier list. I know it's not exactly a meta deck. It's pretty much just Rogue. But I want to put it in there. I love Dragon Link. I want to feature it on the tier list. But it's just rogue the only thing this deck has going for it is the fact that it's playing bestios as part of engine and then they serve as non-engine as well which is nice because of fiend smith just you know being heavily hindered by bestios so well heavily it does get hindered we'll see how much impact bestios have i just feel like you know, consequentially, some decks that play Bishchios are going to do a tiny bit better, and then some decks that get hurt by Bishchios inherently are going to do a little worse. So let's talk about Centurion. I think Centurion is like a solid tier 2 choice. I wouldn't exactly put it in Rogue, but it could be argued because like it's not the most insane deck. However, it can play a lot of hand traps, and also it has King Calamities, so... You know, those two factors I feel like are enough to put Centurion in tier two. But since we're talking about hand chefs right now, this is something I wanted to I wanted to discuss. So hand chefs versus board breakers. In my opinion, we might be moving into a format with more board breakers, if not a lot of them, because it's just much easier to deal with some of these insane boards that we'll see from the decks in Goated with the help of board breakers. Because with hand chaps, all you're doing is hand looping yourself for the most part against these decks because they just have too many extenders. So I think decks with, you know, the capability to run a lot of hand traps are still going to do quite well because we're going to have um, 
a fairly diverse meta, even though all of these decks are probably going to be running Fiendsmith. But still, you're going to try and hinder them with hand traps, and then maybe later we start playing more board breakers because it might prove itself to be more useful. So if that happens and Centurion just kind of is not the way to go, it would also make sense. But King Calamity is a little too busted, and since we're not going to be seeing a ban list anytime soon, I think Centurion is going to be fine for quite a while. So we'll see what happens with that deck. But let's move on to Chimera. So I think Chimera is like going to be quite an okay tier 2 deck. <coughs> and the answer is Fiendsmith. And the answer is going to be Fiendsmith for the most part in this video. But yeah, Chimera works together with Fiendsmith. You can get access to Berfamet and that's all like nice and, and well. However, Chimera has the inherent issue where if some of your starter cards or like one of your starter cards for the most part gets interrupted, there's not that much you can do. You have Nightmare Apprentice, sure, but in my opinion, Chimera is just not the most insane deck out there. And I've been seeing this for quite some time. We'll see if Fiendsmith actually has enough impa impact on it, but in my opinion, it's just a tier two deck, even with Fiendsmith. Now let's talk about Drytron. I kind of want to put Drytron in Not Good Right Now. And I want to clarify that the Not Good Right Now tier is, it doesn't necessarily mean it's worse than Rogue or anything like that, because in the correct situation or format, decks from here can outperform decks from Rogue. Like, in my opinion, Drytron in a, like a board breaker heavy format, especially with all the support it has not has received, it is going to receive in Infinite Forbidden, can be better than something like Dragon Link. But right now we're going to be seeing probably more Bestios because of the Fiendsmith engine. So Drytron is going to suffer kind of as collateral damage, even though it received decent support. So I think it's fine in Naga right now, for right now, but if we see more Borg Breakers, which again, in my opinion, is probably going to happen, then we might see some changes. Exodia, look, I, th I want to put this in Rogue. I can put it a little higher than Dragon Link because I feel like there is potential there, but I haven't really, you know, gone out of my way to study this deck enough to give some very informed opinions. It seems like it's a Rogue deck with potential. So let me know if you're labbing Exodia. I really want to know what's happening with that, but it's just Rogue for right now, in my opinion. <laughs> Let's talk about Exosister. I think this deck is also rogue. It's okay, but we see a lot of the barrier in the format right now, mainly because of a uh, Tempai Dragon, of course. But some other decks are just gonna suffer because of that, because of the inclusion of of the barrier in some decks. And um, yes, Exosister is just an XYZ deck. And even though it has Shifter, I don't think that's gonna really outweigh the negative impact the barrier can have on the deck. So there's that. Fire Kings, in my opinion, they can be tier one, but they're gonna be somewhere in the bottom of tier one. I just think they are outshined by Snake Eyes way too heavily, just the pure version, or with Kashira, or with Fiendsmith. There's not a lot of reason for you to play this deck, in my opinion, if you're trying to play the dominant fire deck right now. So I think it's fine, but it's not the greatest deck out there. Let's talk about Flunder. I think Flunder is tier two. It could possibly go even like below some of these decks because I don't know, I just feel like Flunder doesn't have enough going for it. It's just literally not powerful enough in my opinion. And um, yeah, if we still see a lot of hand traps, of course those hurt Flunder, even though they have the dodge spell, which dodge is targeting negation, but even still like, yes, they have shifter. I I don't know. I, I don't think it's in the greatest spot. It's fine. It can cheese a couple wins just because of Shifter and Harpy's Feather Storm, and sometimes it overwhelms the opponent enough. But I don't know. I think it's fine in tier two. I wouldn't personally put it higher. Gen X is actually really interesting, in my opinion. I kind of think it has potential, uh, but I also think that in this format right now, it's not really the correct time to. I don't know, I don't want to sound too negative, but I don't think it's the correct time to develop some of these decks and really spend a lot of time to try and make these decks work because the 
decks that are going to be placed in goaded and tier one are just way too oppressive and dominant just like i said before so yeah i guess we can put it in not good right now just to say that there's potential there but it's gonna be underexplored for right now because people just physically will not have the time to try and make Gen X work if they're trying to play a meta deck for like nationals well nationals for NAWCQ for example so yeah I think I don't know let me know what you think about Gen X now let's talk about gimmick puppets so I think this deck is actually really interesting I'm kind of tempted to put it at like top of tier 2 or perhaps bottom of tier 1.5 it is consistent at what it does and it also FTKs, although it doesn't FTK as much as it just, you know, can do combos. Another thing is that it's very unknown to a lot of players, or I guess in my opinion, it's going to be because they're fairly old cards. We haven't exactly seen Gimmick Puppet perform in recent years. So people might not just have, they might have not enough knowledge that was weirdly put. <laughs> uh, people will not have enough knowledge to really counter this deck, to know what it does, to know what to expect. So what I would suggest is uh, just spend a couple hours maybe, or not even that, to learn what the deck does, to try and learn the points of interaction where you have to disrupt it. Because I feel like you're going to be able to do that. We still play a lot of hand traps. You're going to be able to stop this deck at least a bit because it's probably going to be able to play through a cup, like at least one interruption. But learn that because a lot of results are going to have to do with the fact that people will just not know where to really disrupt Gimmick Puppet. And also it's underexplored at the moment from people trying to play this deck because we just haven't really had enough time or I guess the players that are trying to do really well, they've been trying things with different decks. So I'm not sure they spend like countless hours on Gimmick Puppet. They might have and they're like the best gim Gimmick Puppet player ever. But <laughs> other than that, I don't know. In general, I think this deck is like tier two, perhaps bottom of tier 1.5 because it does have a lot of potential and, uh, you know, naturally it received support, which is really, really important. So yes, I think the deck is solid and it should not be slept on. So Ice Barrier, uh, let's see if I also have, yes, I do have Sprite on this list. I sort of tend to talk about both these decks in tandem because I think Ice Barrier, like just with Runic, is probably like top of Rogue. I would say it's not a bad deck. However, it's just not as great as some of these other decks. It's a tiny bit too fragile when it comes to some interruption. However, if you're incorporating Ice Barrier as just an engine in Sprite, I can see that because I think Sprite is like kind of slept on always. You can always see, you know, encounter like a Sprite top and it doesn't really surprise you because it has solid cards. Like you have your end board is literally different negates, which there's not a lot of that anymore with the banning of Baron and Savage. And uh, you can incorporate many different engines, not to mention that Ice Barrier works because you can now just go for Toad again, which is kind of nice. So. With that, I want to talk about Sprite and, uh, huh, where do I want to play Sprite? I don't know, I low-key think Sprite is not in a bad spot. So, yeah, let's place it next to Chimera. I genuinely believe in Sprite. So yes, there's that. Infernoid is, I don't know, it's in a weird position, just like Tyr. I tend to compare both of these decks because, and also Tritron, I will put both of them in not good right now, actually. And let's put Gen X lower because, you know, it's kind of lower. <laughs> it's just because it's not the correct format. You have insanely strong engines and um, Infernoid can work together with Fiendsmith as well. So we should not forget that, but you don't have enough space to play enough non-engine to stop some other contenders. And I think that's the main issue. However, in the correct format, I genuinely believe in Infernoid as well as Tier Limits. So Kashtira is kind of like, <laughs> just funny at this point, it's just a rogue deck. It is not scary enough and it does have Shifter. But at that point, I would probably choose Flunder over Kashtira if I'm trying to play a worse shifter deck. Speaking of shifter decks, something that I think is very dangerous 
is Retro Beasts. Now, I, I've been saying this for quite a while now, actually, because I genuinely was interested in this deck and took some time and tried to figure it out and kind of learn the combos and uh, attempt to learn some of the interactions because it's very complicated, but you do want to know where to disrupt this deck, even though it's extremely hard to actually do that because they have extenders. If you're up against a skilled Ritual Beast player, I don't think you're in for a good time and you can play Shifter and it's just really good. <laughs> like the deck is genuinely a threat in my opinion. I'm kind of tempted to put it above Branded Dispia because it has enough space to play non-engine as well because it has one card combos. So with that being said, I think this deck is kind of a threat. <laughs> Let me know what you think if you're a Ritual Beast enthusiast, but I do want to put it in tier 1.5. Now Labyrinth is kind of in a weird spot because you don't have enough space to fit enough non-engine in to, uh, I don't know, justify playing this deck even? It's, it's like, why play it if your trap cards are not going to do enough, at least in my opinion, because of Fiendsmith introducing an Omni Negate with the fusion. What's it called? Oh, my, oh I'm so sorry that I forgot the name, but I'll, I'll just pop the picture like up on the screen. But it's the Negate one. Like it's the Dia something, basically. I think it's tier two, but somewhere down here. I. Mm, I think it's fine, right? But it's not in the greatest spot right now. So I don't know, let's put it like in there, maybe. Light Sworn is really cool, but does not have enough space to play non-engine. And that's not really going to change, I think. You know, with, with Infernoid and, you know, Tear, you have strong engines, but with Light Sworn, you have to incorporate other engines. So you're physically never going to have enough space. And these pile decks usually fall in rogue because of that. And um, yeah, I guess what I like is the fact that you can play through interruption. There are ways to do that, but going second is kind of a struggle. So let's put it like, I don't know, let's put it in rogue. Madolce, I wanted to include it, of course, because of the support. I like the XYZ. I haven't read the other card yet, but the XYZ is solid. It's still my Dolce though. <laughs> so I will put it in Rogue. Please don't beef with me. I really don't like my Dolce and I'm not being biased right now. I genuinely think it's only a Rogue deck. So let's move on. Magical Musketeer, I wanted to put it on this tier list because it works together with Fiendsmith. And overall, I always thought Magical Musketeer is kind of like it's an annoying deck to face. There's a lot of things you have to keep in mind and it's just not, it's not the greatest deck. It kind of got power crept or I guess it was never that amazing in the first place, but with Fiendsmith, things could change. So in my opinion, this deck could genuinely be somewhere towards the top of Rogue and even possibly make it to tier two if someone breaks it and just creates this solid build that's gonna be able to go up against some of the tier two or tier 1.5, even higher decks. So yes, I don't know, I might be coping because I like the, like the strategy by itself, but I don't think I am. <laughs> Let's talk about Monodium and why it's still on the tier list, <laughs> which I don't wanna be rude, but I <laughs> Should it go in, bruh? I don't know. It's Monodium. It's it's like, what's this deck even gonna do? It, Droll is going to be reintroduced in the meta, so that's another hit for, like, to Monodium. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it's bruh. Right now. <laughs> Let's talk about Marinces. Very similarly to Centurion, it's like, it's okay because it can play hand traps. If things change, it could possibly incorporate other non-engine, but I don't think the engine itself is good enough. So... I want to place it like maybe here next to Ice Barrier. Like it's fine, but it's not the greatest. Mathmech <laughs> and Melodious. Uh, in my opinion, Melodious is like, it's actually not in a bad spot, but what's going to happen is, I'll place it here because what's going to happen is we're going to start playing more board breakers, just like I said before, and Droplet and Dark Ruler and stuff like that actually hurts Melodious. Like, Melodious thrives in a format, or it's thriving right now, because we're playing so many hand traps, which 
don't really do that much to Melodious. It's like, it always happens to me. I'm up against the deck. I draw multiple pain traps because I'm playing like Snake Eyes or something. And then I just start hand looping myself because they have extenders. And then I have like one Snake Eye Ash and they disrupt me. And it's just like, okay, cool game too. <laughs> so that's what happens with this deck. However, if we switch, o switch over to board breakers and stuff, I think it's going to be a little tougher to compete with this deck um, if you're playing it. So I think it's fine in tier 1.5. Now let's talk about Memento. This deck is really scary, actually, because the support is so solid. Like the fusion is really nice. The sheep or whatever it's called right now is like a wordplay. But it's so good. It it actually like it special summons itself. It it has a good destruction effect. It just it does so much. It fusion summons, and you're just able to you know end with the fusion as well, which has a solid effect where it pops your cards, it pops your opponent's cards, your memento cards trigger because they're popped. You're sending stuff to the graveyard. I believe you sent three, which is like actually insane. I don't know. This deck kind of caught us off guard. We weren't really expecting for it to be that good with the support. But I think another thing that it has going for it is the factor of... It's just a surprise factor. People don't really know what's up with this deck, at least not enough. And again, not everyone is going to be as prepared for NAWCQ, for example. Like, of course, you're going to try and prepare yourself as best as possible. But there's so many decks you have to keep in mind that you're really going to have to pick which decks you're trying to learn. And I would suggest to respect Memento. It could possibly go into tier one at one point. Like I genuinely think this deck is dangerous and has a lot of potential, but it's not exactly goaded, at least not yet. Maybe post the ban list, we'll see what happens, but that's like months from now, unfortunately. Okay, this is the new flip archetype. It's pretty much the new guru because like, it's an earth archetype with a lot of different types. It's just Guru made better. It's flipping and doing stuff, which is kind of, um, it really annoys me not to go off on a tangent too much, but it's oh, they always do that. They take an old approach to an archetype, which is kind of trash at that point, and they just reintroduce it, but put a new name tag on it, which I don't like. However, this archetype is interesting. I'll put it in Rogue for now because I haven't really checked it out enough to, again, give an informed opinion. So please let me know what you think about it. It's also a TCG exclusive, which they don't always do that well. So I'll put it here and we'll see what happens with it. It might even be too high at this point. I don't really know. So let's place it down here. Orcus is unfortunately not in the in a good spot right now. It's just not strong enough. Power creep happened to it, and we just gotta accept it, in my opinion. Paleo is not good right now. I would say this deck is like really interesting. It can be okay in some situations, but oh, I guess it's just rogue. Let's put it in rogue. Uh, Paleo Orcus. Dragon Link is probably a little better. Exodia is like, it's, it has potential, but I don't really know what to think about it. And I guess Paleo can go somewhere down here. Plunder Patrol is also just a rogue deck. You can play it with Runic. No one really plays the deck at this point. It's just not good enough. Pearly is an, in is an interesting deck because we physically will not have enough space in the extra deck to actually um, deal with like towers because we have to incorporate all the fiendsmith cards. So Pearly can still wins here and there because people will not be prepared for it enough. It can also play Shifter if it wants to. Like, I don't think it's in a bad spot at all. So I'll place it like here, maybe. I think it's fine. I think it's an okay deck. Raid Raptor is not in a great spot. I'll put it in not good right now because uh, a lot of hand traps that we're gonna be playing right now is gonna hurt this deck too much. It's just collateral damage. Rika is um, probably tier 1.5 or tier 2. Let's place it here. I believe in Rika. You know, I am European, so I respect it. <laughs> then we have Runic Stun, which this one is actually going to suffer uh, because of the Omni Negates from the Fiendsmith archetype, which still I cannot remember the name of. But when you have Omni Negates, that's the best way to counter a stun strategy. So I feel like this is going to kind of slip down to top of Rogue. 
We'll see if it still does well. I don't think it's a bad deck at all, but the inclusion of the Omni Negate, I think it's going to matter quite a lot in this matchup. Then we have Salomon Great, which is like a very solid tier two, in my opinion. Let's place it here. I, there, there, there's not uh, a negative thing I have to say about Salomon Great. It's just, it's solid. Everything is the, it does is fine. But we'll see if some of these decks, namely like uh, Chimera with Fiendsmith, like overshadows it just because of the Fiendsmith inclusion. I'm interested to see what happens. Then we have Shark, which has a lot of potential, but it's just not in the greatest spot. So I want to place it like maybe somewhere over here. I think this is fine. Look, Rescue Ace with Fiendsmith. You already know I really like Rescue Ace, but I'm going to be the first one to say it's just the worst fire deck. And that's a fact. Fiendsmith can help it and it can um, play the Omni Negate to protect uh, cards from back row removal, which is really important, but it still just breaks and it's just rescue ace. And it really pains me to say that, but I think it's fair to put it in tier two. I don't think it should be in tier 1.5. It's not consistent enough. It's just, it's unfortunately not good enough. So I will place it here. Then we have Sky Striker. It's just really, it's not a great deck, unfortunately. Snake Eyes, of course, has to go in Goaded. I didn't go through all the trouble of making different icons for Snake Eyes because I really wanted to just talk about it. We all know it's Goaded and you can play Snake Eyes, Fiendsmith Snake Eyes or Kashira Snake Eyes, but all of them go into Goaded in my opinion. They are just levels above, or I guess you could argue that, of course, Fiendsmith is better than the other two versions, but they are still either Goder or tier 1.5, or excuse me, tier 1. But with the Fiendsmith stuff, like, I know it's expensive. I know you gotta, like, sell kidneys to really afford this, which is stupid, but it's the dominant version. Fiendsmith is terrible. It's scary. It is so good. So this deserves to go into Goaded. And since we're talking about Goaded decks, I think Yubel or Fiendlink or however you want to call it, and of course this is Yubel with Fiendsmith, has got to go in Goaded. It's really good. The only downside of it is the fact that it plays some bricks, which is really annoying. But both of these decks are going to be dominating Euros and NAWCQ in my opinion. And um, Yes, that's just the truth. <laughs> so let's talk about Sword Soul. I don't know, just a fair deck. Let's put it in tier two. Like Sword Soul is just never, never a great deck in my opinion. It's fine, but it's too fair. Tempire Dragon can go in tier one easily. I kind of want to put this like, let's leave it here. But Tempire Dragon is good. It also receives support in um, Infinite Forbidden. So there's that. It's not a deck that can easily like win an event, but you can top with it because like in top cut, it's going to be a little different. Everyone's going to be prepared for you and it's really tough to go first. Now Unchain, in my opinion, is kind of nice. It's pretty much like everything Fiendling does, like you can also just incorporate Unchained in there and play like a mashup if that's what you want. But if you're an Unchained, like pure Unchained enthusiast, you can still do these combos. It's just not, not going to be as explosive. It's going to be very control unchained style. If that's what you like, it's fine. You put up enough interruptions, you layer your stuff, you have space for non-engine, so you can do all of that, but it's just not as good as you bow with the other fiend stuff. So I think unchained can go in tier 1.5 or perhaps top of tier two. Um, I think it's fine like this, maybe. Like this is okay. Gimmick puppets can maybe be tier 1.5 even. And then the other things can be like that. I think this is fine. Now Velmonica, I don't know enough about it. So please educate me. But from what I've seen, it's interesting but it's not the greatest deck. So let's place it somewhere in Rogue and y'all can let me know what you think about it. Uh, then there's Vanquish Soul, which is like an okay Rogue deck in my opinion. It breaks, which is unfortunate, but it also plays Shifter, which is fortunate. And uh, there's also Voiceless Voice, which 
I always talk trash about Voices Voice. It's not gonna stop now. I genuinely think this deck is like... I, I don't know. This deck is just not good enough. Like You have to open so well going first. You don't put up enough interruption to really be a threat if you don't open extremely well, which is not always going to happen. And going second, it's going to be a struggle because again, you have to rely on opening hand traps and good access to your engine and possibly extenders to even dream about breaking through a board. So I don't know. I don't think this deck is in a good spot. Let's, I don't know. I want to put it like down here and <laughs> let me know what you think. But when it comes to White Woods, now this deck I want to put at the very top of Rogue, I do have hopes for it. There's a lot of engines you can include with this deck, um, mainly the Toy Engine, which just works together with the deck really well. It's also like solid. When you read cards, you can tell, especially if you've been playing for some time, you can tell when support is good. You can read the memento cards and know they are good. And you can do the same with White Woods, but it's just that it seems a tiny bit too fair. However, you can probably break it if you, I don't know, just play with the deck long enough and try things out and not be afraid to incorporate different engines and try to make it work. So I want to put it at the very top of Rogue just to say that it can easily go into tier two. It just needs the correct group of people to really dedicate their time and efforts to try and make this deck work. So I have hopes for this deck. It's just unfortunate that it got introduced in a format that is heavily oppressed by some really unhealthy strategies. So if we erased like Goaded and some of these decks up here, I think decks like Memento and Ritual Beast and White Woods and all of that can just fight it out and it would actually be really fun. Of course, they don't care about us having fun, so this is not a format we are in, but maybe in a couple months, post a ban list, decks like White Woods could actually be kind of successful. So yes, I think that's pretty much going to be it. I'm quite satisfied with this tier list. I believe this is kind of what things are looking like right now. These are the decks you have to be most prepared for and some of the tier 1.5 decks could easily be tier one with the correct person piloting the deck. But then you kind of have to be prepared for like 10 other decks in tier two because you're probably going to face them in Swiss if you're playing any of the two big events coming up. So hope you enjoyed this video and uh, please share your thoughts in the comments. I would love to chat with you about the format and about things to come and also make sure you interact with the videos, like, sub and do all of that so you can still be entered into the SP giveaway, which is ending tomorrow. So in tomorrow's with video, I will be announcing a winner. So good luck to you. And uh, of course, thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.